But we have a special treat with us tonight. <clears throat> One of the women in my book who I absolutely adored and adore in spirit now was Eleanor Pruitt Stewart. Eleanor, um, I'm trying, see, I know when I do these little stickies, here we go. Eleanor was born in 1876, and we're honoring her tonight, and I'm gonna, I have a lot to say about her, but we're honoring her tonight because her grandson and her great-grandchildren are here with us tonight. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> so let me tell you a bit about Eleanor Pruitt Stewart. Eleanor Pruitt Stewart is one of the more, I tell you what, she's one of the more children in my book. I like to, distra- to describe her as a piece of Wrigley Spearmint gum after garlic pasta. Because Eleanor was a breath of fresh air. She never met a man or woman she didn't like, and she always had a sense of service and a sense of humor. Eleanor was born in Oklahoma in 1876 in the Chickasaw, 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 Chickasaw Nation Indian Territory. I can't read my hand right. She had eight brothers and sisters. Her family was poor, and she didn't have a pair of shoes until she was six years old. Her schooling ended abruptly when her teacher was hung from a sycamore tree because he was accused of stealing a horse. And Eleanor's in- inquisitive mind looked for knowledge where she, wherever she could find it, and she learned to read from scraps of paper. She married at the age of 26 in 1902, but birthed her baby, Jereen, as a single mother. Now, Eleanor found whatever opportunity she could to provide for her child as a single mother. And she was dragging what she calls coals to the hungry furnace to provide for her daughter. And she was, she was getting ill and getting sick. I hope I get all this right. Now, for a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done to her? But she, she got ill. And she, when she was lying there when she was sick, she dreamt. She'd heard about women who were homesteading in the Wild West. And she, this became her dream. She wanted to be one of the first women to do this. And Eleanor, she did it. And she wrote humorous stories to her former employer, Mrs. Coney, and these letters from the young woman who learned how to read from on pieces of paper because her teacher was hung from a sycamore tree, from scraps of paper. Her stories were later printed in the Atlantic Monthly. And one of my favorite images of Eleanor Fruit Stewart, because I have a little girl and we have horses, is how she just embraced the Wild West. And she would pick up a little Jereen and put her on the back of the horse and they'd ride through the prairies and she would, just, she would just describe it in such lovely, wonderful ways. And I just love the image of little Jereen on the back of the, bare back on the back of the saddle and then when they would get to where they were going, she'd pull out her gun and shoot whatever it needed to be done or fish. And, and Jereen would catch the grasshoppers and she'd make the fishing pole and they had to fill the fire and she'd cook and she was just amazing. And I want to share a few things that she wrote out of, out of my book here. Okay. Now, she wrote these letters back home to Mrs. Coney. And so this is one of her letters when she was um, on her journey in a sta- in, on horseback after she got off the train to go work with Mr. Stewart in Wyoming. Meanwhile, my new employer, Mr. Stewart, sat upon a stack of baggage and was dreadfully concerned about something he called his dookie, but I'm unable to tell you what that is. <laughs> the road, being so muddy and full of ruts and, and the stage acted and the stage acted as if it had the hiccups and made us all talk as though we were affected in the same way. Once Mr. Stewart asked me if I if I did not think he it was a gay dear dark trip. Is that how it be? I told him he could call it there if he wanted to, but it didn't seem very hilarious to me. Every time the stage struck a rock, a rock or a rut, Mr. Stewart would go, whoop, until I began to wish we would come to a hollow tree or a hole in the ground so he could go in it with the rest of the owls. At last we arrive, and something and everything is just lovely for me. I have a very, very comfortable situation, and Mr. Stewart is absolutely no trouble. For as soon as he has had his meals, he retires to his room and plays on his bagpipe, only he calls it his bug peep. It is the camels are coming. 
without variations at intervals all day long from 7 to 11 at night. <laughs> Sometimes I wish they would just make haste and get here. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> she, said, she would say things like, I'm adding feathers to my cap in a surprising way. When you see me again, you will think I'm wearing a feather duster, but it is only that I have been said to have almost as much sense as a mom. And this is an honor I never aspired to, even in my wildest dreams. And the last thing I want to share with you, she was a steward of her room because she, she, she actually went on this journey, Wild West, became one of the first women to homestead. She did homestead, and she wanted to share this, share this opportunity with other women who had been in similar circumstances that she had been in. To me, homesteading is the solution of all poverty's problems, but I realize that temperament has much to do with success in any undertaking, and persons afraid of coyotes and work and loneliness had better let Ratchie alone. At the same time, any woman who can stand her own company can see the beauty of a sunset, loves growing things, and is willing to put in as much time at careful labor as she does over the wash tub, will certainly succeed. Will have independence, plenty to eat all the time, and a home of her own in the end. I would not for anything allow Mr. Stewart to do anything toward improving my place. For I want to be able to speak from experience when I tell others what they can do. Theories are very beautiful, but facts are what must be had, and what I intend to give some time. But I'm only thinking of the troops of tired, worried women sometimes even cold and hungry, scared to death of losing their places to work, who could have plenty to eat, who could have good fires by gathering the wood, and comfortable homes of their own, if they had but the courage and determination to get them. So Eleanor Pruitt Stewart is near and dear to my heart, and I am very, very thrilled and honored to be able to give this award to Eleanor Pruitt Stewart's family and her relatives tonight attending our Ellen Pruitt Stewart's daughter, Jeanine, who was on horseback with her through all those journeys. Her daughter's son, Mike Wire, and his wife, Joan. Mick! Mike! Mick! <laughs> Mick, right? It's Mike here, but it's Mick there! <laughs> Mick Wire and his wife, Joan. Their three daughters, Jennifer Wire, Michelle Moros Morowski, and Megan Liver, how do you say that? I don't know. Liver Notch. <laughs> Liver Notch. And their three grandchildren, Riley, Taylor, and Michaela. And they're all here, and they're all the lineage of Eleanor Cruz Stewart. I would like you all to come up here. Wow. Wow. I'll leave this, but I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. <laughs>